Have you heard that California has become the first state in the United States to offer a slavery reparation package? If you don't know about it, you finally will in this video. This slavery package has silenced all skeptics and those who used to be pessimists about slayer reparations. However, there is a catch. California is not planning to give direct cash payments, rather, it has plans to offer land. This takes us back to the classic discussion of whether getting cash payments or land would benefit black Americans more. Conservatively speaking, cash only means paper, which black Americans cannot trust in the long term. However, the land offers an opportunity for black Americans to use it, increase production, and become a wealthy class. But what do the black lawmakers in California propose about slavery reparations? What benefits will the slavery reparation package and bill offer to black Americans? And when will it be implemented? Let's know about that in this video. The Black History Archives Currently, California has become a hotspot for bills focused on delivering slavery reparations. Therefore, not one but tens of bills are being drafted, each aimed at righting the historical wrongs. And among those bills, one aims to return property seized in racially motivated eminent domain cases, while another looks to secure state funding for specific groups despite potential legal challenges. Throughout the Jim Crow era and the 20th century, black communities encountered systematic discrimination in property ownership. Local authorities and law enforcement frequently collaborated with white supremacist groups to forcibly seize land from black individuals or coerce them into selling their property at unjust prices. This practice, referred to as racial violence or racial cleansing, aimed to uphold white dominance in specific areas by displacing black residents and transferring their land to white ownership. Moreover, discriminatory lending practices like redlining hindered many black families from obtaining mortgages or loans to buy homes or establish businesses in certain neighborhoods. This systemic denial of financial opportunities widened the wealth gap between black and white Americans and perpetuated economic inequality. Furthermore, in more recent years, instances of eminent domain abuse and gentrification have disproportionately affected black communities. Local authorities and developers have utilized eminent domain laws to acquire land in predominantly black neighborhoods for urban renewal projects or private development often resulting in the displacement of long-standing residents and the loss of intergenerational wealth. Therefore, the slavery reparation California is offering not only includes reparation for slavery, but what happened during Jim Crow laws as well. The 14 measures presented by the Legislative Black Caucus cover a range of areas, including education, civil rights, and criminal justice. Among them is a renewed effort to restrict solitary confinement a proposal that previously faced obstacles in the State House. Notably, the package does not include direct financial compensation for descendants of black slaves, a divisive issue opposed by many state Democrats, including Governor Gavin Newsom. However, even if the package does not offer cash, it does offer land. Assemblymember Lori Wilson, who chairs the caucus, emphasized the need for a comprehensive approach to address the legacy of slavery and systemic racism beyond monetary reparations. However, one bill in the package, introduced by State Senator Stephen Bradford, seeks to provide financial relief by addressing property seizures. It aims to return property taken through race-based eminent domain cases to its original owners or offer alternative remedies such as restitution or compensation where appropriate. Black lawmakers are gearing up for a challenging road ahead. They anticipate spending significant time educating their colleagues and rallying support for the bills. Democratic Assembly member Corey Jackson is proposing a constitutional amendment to allow California to allocate state funds to programs to improve outcomes for specific demographic groups based on race, ethnicity, gender, or sexual orientation. Other proposals in the mix include safeguards for natural and protective hairstyles in competitive sports and an official apology from the governor and legislature for the state's historical involvement in human rights violations against African slaves and their descendants. Here's a reminder to please support us so we can make more videos for you by subscribing to our channel and giving the video a like. We want to build a strong community and we need your support. Let's continue now. 
You should know that California's Reparations Task Force released a 500-page report in 2022. This comprehensive document outlined over 170 years of state-sanctioned racism against Black residents. Expanding on this groundwork, the task force issued a final 1,100-page report in 2023, presenting various methods for the state to address and rectify these historical injustices, including the potential for individual cash payments. The reports illuminated the persistent wealth gap between Black and white Americans, attributing it to generations of atrocities in nearly every sector of civil society, including segregation, racial terror, and discriminatory policies. California's pioneering state reparations initiative has inspired individual cities, including San Francisco, Boston, and Detroit, to establish their own task forces to explore reparations for Black residents. Nevertheless, the initiative has sparked debates over eligibility criteria and encountered opposition, particularly regarding the recommendation to provide financial payments to descendants of enslaved and free Black Americans from the 19th century. Despite recognizing the ongoing impact of slavery on Black residents, most California voters oppose cash payments as reparations, as indicated by an August 2023 poll. While 75% of Black California voters support reparations payments, majorities of White, Asian, Pacific Islander, and Latino voters oppose them. But the point is, why non-Blacks are being asked in the first place? Why did they get a say in deciding whether reparations should be paid or not when they did not endure slavery? The California Legislative Black Caucus introduced the 2024 Reparations Priority Bill Package, which includes 14 measures. These measures include various actions, such as issuing a formal apology for human rights violations and crimes against humanity on African slaves and their descendants. Additionally, the package proposes establishing a state-funded grant program to address community violence in Black neighborhoods and requires advanced notification of grocery store closures in underserved and vulnerable communities. According to state legislators, some of the legislation has already been introduced in the state's General Assembly, while others will be introduced during the current legislative session. This means that quite soon, California will finally implement a first-in-nation reparation package that will offer lands to Black people. You should note that last June, a task force examining reparations for Black residents in the state released its final report with over 115 recommendations on how the state should rectify slavery and historical atrocities. Among these recommendations was a proposal for monetary compensation paid to descendants of enslaved Africans residing in California. However, the report did not specify the amount, leaving it to be determined by lawmakers. But is land a better option than cash payment? Well, there are supporters for both options, and both are right. No matter whether reparations are paid in the form of land or cash payment, they should be welcomed. However, if one is to analyze which option will be profitable, land should be the priority. It's because receiving land as part of slavery reparations offers numerous advantages over receiving cash payments for Black Americans. Firstly, cash payments are subject to taxation, meaning that a portion of the money received would likely be allocated to paying taxes, reducing the actual compensation received. In contrast, land is a tangible asset that typically does not incur immediate taxation upon receipt. Moreover, cash payments are susceptible to inflation which can diminish the purchasing power of the money over time. As inflation erodes the value of currency, the real value of cash payments decreases, potentially leaving recipients with less purchasing power in the future. However, land is considered a stable and appreciating asset over time. Historically, land values have increased, serving as a hedge against inflation and preserving wealth for future generations. Additionally, Cash payments are inherently less reliable as a long-term investment compared to land. Cash is essentially paper currency with no intrinsic value beyond its purchasing power, and its value can be influenced by economic fluctuations, government policies, and market conditions. A simple way to understand it is to know what will happen if cash is paid. If we suppose the government is paying reparation in cash, extra cash has to be printed. This will inevitably create inflation which means the purchasing power of the given cash will naturally decrease. What's more, in some cases, the purchasing power of money can be artificially decreased just after the very moment of giving reparation payments. 
In contrast, land represents a tangible and enduring asset that holds inherent value and can be utilized for various purposes, including agriculture, residential or commercial development, or natural resource extraction. Acquiring land through reparations has the potential to empower the Black community economically and socially. Land ownership offers opportunities for wealth accumulation and generational prosperity. By owning land, individuals can become landlords, generating rental income and accruing equity over time. Additionally, land ownership provides a sense of stability and autonomy, enabling individuals to control their living and working environments. Furthermore, land ownership enables Black communities to establish self-sustaining economic initiatives, such as farming cooperatives or community development projects, fostering economic independence and resilience. Land ownership also facilitates access to resources and opportunities for education, entrepreneurship, and community development. In conclusion, while cash payments may offer immediate financial relief, acquiring land as part of slavery reparations provides significant long-term benefits for Black Americans. Land ownership offers stability, opportunities for wealth creation, and economic empowerment, making it a valuable asset for addressing historical injustices and promoting social and economic equity within the Black community. Even though cash can be used to buy land, receiving land offers an already-made opportunity to use land for prosperity. History is the witness that political power came to the land-downing class, who could have the power to say and demand what they wanted. Having land gives the Black community a stake, a bargaining chip, to demand their rights. That's quite different from receiving cash, which can be instantly spent ensuring no long-term or multi-generational wealth. What do you think? Should Black Americans be given direct cash payments or is land more profitable? Do you support slavery reparations or do you believe it won't be paid at all? In the comments section right below, share your thoughts for those who don't believe in reparation and why reparations should be paid in the first place. Would you like us to make more videos? If yes, Please support us by subscribing to the Black History Archives and clicking the bell icon. You can check out more videos on our channel too.